thank you. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, if you just heard that message, you'll you'll see that we're recording the meeting for anyone who um, is not able to attend tonight and still would like to to learn about the project and uh, and hear responses to questions. So uh, thank you for coming out. Um, this is the Queensway Terrace uh, Storm Sewer Rehabilitation Project. And uh, this is an update because uh, it's moving on, it's getting to the next stage. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, introduce the crew, but first um, um, I wish to acknowledge that Ottawa is located on unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation. And I'd like to honor the land and the peoples of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation whose ancestors have lived on this territory for millennia and whose culture and presence have nurtured and continue to nurture this land. Thank you. So um, I'm Teresa Cavanaugh, if I, I always forget to introduce myself, city councillor for Bay Ward. And um, I'm gonna pass it over to the project manager for the Queensway Terrace uh, Storm Sewer Rehabilitation Project. And that's Kevin Gibbs and he'll introduce a team that he has with him. And what we're gonna do, just so everyone's clear, um, is we're gonna have questions in chat. So um, if we have questions, we can read them. Um, we did get questions ahead of time, so we'll try and get through those as well, of course. Um, but uh, we will not be reading comments. So if you make statements or comments, um, we're, we're just reading the questions so that they can be answered, just to, to move things along so that everyone gets their information. Okay, now I'll hand it over to you, Kevin, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Gibbs. I'm the project manager for this project, the Queensway Terrace Storm Sewer Rehabilitation Project. Welcome to our uh, virtual information session. Uh, the purpose of this uh, online engagement opportunity is to provide residents with a general update of the current construction activities and to provide residents with an overview of the upcoming construction activities for uh, this uh, summer, this spring and summer. So if you have any questions regarding this project or regarding the presentation, please contact me. Uh, my coordinates are at the end of the presentation. We'll leave them on the screen for a bit. So I'd like to introduce uh, Jason Bate, our uh, contract administrator, who has prepared uh, a presentation for um, the part two of the project, uh, focusing uh, what's coming up and talking a little bit about uh, what we have to, to complete uh, this, this spring here. So Jason. Want to take it away. Great. Um, thanks, Kevin, and thanks everyone for uh, for attending. Uh, so, for those of you who who don't know me already from uh, the previous public information sessions, my name is uh, Jason Bette. I'm a senior civil engineer with uh, GL Richards and Associates, and uh, our firm was retained by the City of Ottawa to do the design work for the for the project. Uh, so, the following portion of the presentation will just provide a real quick. Uh, We'll provide an update on, on the project, including project status, uh, timeline for the remaining, uh, for the remaining construction. Um, and for those of you in attendance who maybe weren't able, aren't familiar with the project or weren't able to attend the information sessions in, in April and uh, November, I'll just do a real high level kind of recap of, uh, of the project scope and what people can, can expect during, uh, during construction. So this map here shows uh, shows highlights the the project limits. So uh, the project includes Henley from Connaught to uh, to Alpine, the northern section of Arkell, Alpine from Henley to Clarinda, Clarinda from Alpine to Mossdale, Mossdale from Clarinda to Moncton, Moncton to just past the east leg of Gold Crescent and uh, from Moncton to Queensview Drive through uh, an existing easement. So this slide here just provides a really high level overview of, of the work that is going on as, as part of this project. Um, so I'll, I'll expand on some of these points as we go on through the presentation. So uh, the project involves replacing the trunk storm sewer on uh, Moncton Road, Mossdale, Clarinda, Alpine and Henley realigning a section of trunk storm and sanitary sewer along sections of Alpine and Henley Street, replacing uh, the trunk storm and sanitary sewers on Arkell from uh, Henley Street to about 942, 943 uh, Arkell Street with new local sewers, 
abandoning existing trunk storm and sanitary sewers that are located within an easement that runs between, uh, between Alpine and, uh, and Arkell Street, uh, replacing select sections of sanitary sewer and water main as well as house service laterals impacted by the trunk storm sewer replacement. Uh, reinstating uh, the roadway, grass boulevard, any affected landscaping, uh, landscaped areas once the underground work has been completed. Uh, the project also involves constructing a new sidewalk on the north side of Henley from Connaught to, uh, to Alpine and uh, narrowing of the northeast corner of the Alpine and Henley intersection. And last but not least, planting of new trees to compensate for existing trees that, uh, that had to be removed to allow for the trunk storm sewer uh, installation. So we spoke uh, on the previous slide about replacement of the trunk storm sewer that runs through the Queensway uh, Terrace uh, North community. So currently this pipe, uh, this pipe runs north on Alpine. Uh, but then instead of continuing uh, all the way up to Henley Street, uh, the existing trunk storm sewer runs through an easement uh, between existing homes over to Arkell, flows northerly on Arkell, and then east on Henley Street uh, towards Connaught. Um, so there's also an existing trunk sanitary sewer that runs in parallel to uh, the trunk storm sewer. So due to the, the proximity of the existing homes uh, to, uh, within this easement, the pipe can't be replaced in its uh, current location. So the trunk storm and sanitary sewer have since been realigned north on Alpine and then uh, east on Henley Street. So now that that work is completed and these sections of, of trunk sewer have been realigned, uh, the sewers that are located within the easement can, uh, can now be abandoned. And uh, the trunk storm and sanitary sewer that run uh, along the northern section of our Kel can be uh, replaced with, uh, with smaller local sewers. Um, so that's, that's why people are gonna be seeing this year some construction at the, the north limits of, of our Kel. It's to kind of carry out that, that, uh, that work uh, to downsize the, the sewers on that north section of the roadway. Uh, as and uh, as part of that work, the, the water main will also be, uh, be getting replaced. So I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail on kind of the specifics of the type of work that'll be happening on uh, Arkell and kind of what to expect during construction further on in, uh, in the presentation. So as mentioned at the public information sessions in, in April and, uh, and November, and also on the city's project website, the overall construction for the project is expected to take two and a half years uh, to complete, running from 2021 to uh, 2023. Uh, the project has been split into two parts that are highlighted in red and blue on, on the attached uh, figure. So part one is highlighted in red, uh, involves Henley and uh, the north portion of, uh, of Alpine. Uh, part one construction uh, started last year and we'll, uh, we'll wrap up this year. Uh, part two construction is highlighted in blue. It includes uh, the balance of uh, the trunk storm sewer replacement on Alpine, Clarinda, Mossdale, Moncton, and through the easement from Moncton to Queensview Drive, as well as work at the northern end of, uh, of, uh, of Arkell. So although there have been some, some delays with components of the work for part one, the overall uh, project schedule has, has not changed. So what is the, the status of uh, the current work, uh, work for part one? So the deep storm and sanitary sewers have since uh, been installed on Henley and, uh, and Alpine. Uh, along with the, the new water main infrastructure, which has since been, uh, since been commissioned. Uh, the trunk storm sewer installation on Henley from Connaught to Arkell has, uh, has been completed and the contractor now is just wrapping up some, uh, the installation of some catch basin uh, drainage structures along that section of roadway. So that's, that's where things are in terms of the underground for, for part one. Um, 
So before we, we move a little on into the presentation, just wanted to take an opportunity to, uh, to go through a few pictures from, uh, from some of the more recent construction activities for people that maybe aren't, aren't familiar with the project or haven't had a chance to kind of go out and, and see what's, what's been going on in the community. So just uh, the photo on the right hand side just shows the, the shows the trunk storm sewer pipe that's being installed as part of this project, just to provide people with some perspective of the, of the size of the infrastructure that, uh, that we're dealing with here. So these photos show the construction operation. We're looking south down, uh, down Alpine from, uh, from, uh, from Henley, and it shows uh, uh, the contractor doing the, the last sections of the, uh, the trunk sanitary sewer installation from, from part one. So here's a few more photos that show the, the installation of those last sections of, uh, of trunk sanitary sewer. So the photo on the right, you can see the, the last, last few remaining sections of the uh, of pipe that are basically tying in the, the realigned section of the trunk sanitary sewer to the, uh, the, existing, uh, the existing trunk sanitary sewer. Here's a few more photos taken from uh, along Alpine. So here we see photos of the installation of, uh, of the trunk storm sewer. So here the contractor is installing a section. It's a it's a precast bend section. So this allows allows the alignment of the trunk storm sewer to basically be uh, deflected without needing uh, a larger and more expensive uh, maintenance hole structure. Now we're heading over to Henley, where construction has been kind of ongoing throughout uh, throughout the winter to install the the trunk storm sewer along that section of roadway. So here's a couple of photos just showing uh, showing kind of the the typical the typical installation. And then here again some more photos of the work that's been going on on Henley. So this is actually a, a kind of a an interesting photo. It shows on the right hand side you can see the existing uh, trunk storm sewer uh, that's being removed uh, as the new pipe is about to be installed. And then the photo on the left, you kind of get to see, uh, you kind of get to see the existing, the existing upstream trunk storm sewer and the new, uh, the new trunk storm sewer that's kind of been being installed in behind it as the old pipe is uh, is removed. So now that uh, now that all of the underground work is essentially done uh, for for part one, what what are the next steps associated with, uh, with part one uh, construction? So we'll get into that just now. So, uh, so next steps we can expect on Henley and Alpine for part one would be the contractor finishing, uh, placing the granular road base along that, that north, the north trench for Henley, uh, reinstating the road granulars along the, uh, the southern limits of, uh, of part one on Alpine. Next after that, they would, they would go in and form up and pour the concrete curbs uh, and sidewalk. After that, they would follow up by fine, fine grading the granulars on the roadway and then paving base course asphalt. And then last but not least, uh, after that work is done, any driveways that were imp impacted by the construction would be repaved or reinstated, as well as uh, as well as uh, the landscaping work. So this might be a little bit new here for people. So since the last uh, information session. Um, uh, in November, the city has also added the installation of two speed humps to uh, to Alpine Avenue to, and into the the current project scope. So that would be located between Henley and and Elmhurst. So the approximate location of the of the speed humps are that are to be installed are shown on the sketch. So the first speed hump would be located. Or, about 30 meters north of Henley. And the second speed hump would be located about 80 meters uh, north of uh, the first speed hump. 
Um, so the exact exact location still has to kind of still has to be refined uh, in in the coming months. And uh, the tentative plan would then to be to install these speed humps as part of the current project in uh, in 2022. So that's 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 a new a new component to to this project that's that's been added in. Um, and also we wanted to make uh, people aware of something else that's been kind of, I guess, in the works for the project. So um, as many of you are aware, the city has, uh, has a separate project uh, that, uh, that's been ongoing that's kind of in the early stages of design to install a sidewalk along the, uh, the east side of, uh, of Connaught Avenue. Uh, so the same project includes uh, the installation of select uh, traffic calming elements as well. Uh, so we understand that the, the design for that project is supposed to take place later in 2022 with construction planned for 2023. Um, however, uh, within, the, uh, within the Connaught and Henley intersection, that, uh, that concept plan calls for the installation of a of a raised uh, pedestrian crossing um, at the north, uh, the north leg of the intersection. So right now, the city is currently reviewing the option of uh, of advancing the installation of this raised pedestrian crossing, as well as the the section of east sidewalk on Connaught within within the intersection only um, as part of the current project. And uh, it does it does make a lot of sense in the, uh, in that the installation of these elements next year as part of another project would actually result in in impacts to the existing or to the sidewalk that we would be installing this year as part of the project. Uh, it would, there'd also be impacts to the the new newly repaved portions of uh, of the intersection if they come back next year to do to do that uh, to do that work. So it does it does make sense to try and include those uh, those components uh, as part of the current project. So um, with under this approach, the idea would be a detailed design for just just these elements within the uh, within the Connaught and Henley intersection would be uh, would be a, would be completed this spring, so that uh, then the work uh, uh, the concrete work and the raised pedestrian crossing could be installed as part of the uh, the current project, and then uh, the balance the balance of the sidewalk along the east side of Connaught. To the north and south of uh, of Henley would be installed uh, in 2023 uh, as part of as part of uh, uh, the other project uh, as is currently planned. So again, just uh, just something that we wanted to uh, take. We wanted to take the opportunity with this public information session to just make people aware of this uh, of this uh, of what's in the works here. Um, so uh, for, the re for the reinstatement work that's remaining for part one, uh, the contractor's planning to complete this work in parallel with the underground work that is gonna be ongoing for, for part two. Uh, so we would expect to see reinstatement of the road, uh, the granular road base and placement of concrete curbs and sidewalk um, somewhere between mid-May to, to mid-June. So the exact timing would be dependent on when the city uh, lifts the, the half load restrictions on, on city roads and on uh, availability of uh, concrete crews, which we understand uh, are, are quite busy citywide uh, this spring. Uh, so then once the concrete work is, is placed, uh, it would be followed up by fine grading of uh, the road and paving of base course asphalt expected in uh, expected in uh, in late June. Um, and then as well, the landscaping would be carried out kind of in, in conjunction running approximately mid June to, uh, to to mid July. So that's that's kind of the, the timing for uh, the reinstatement work uh, for for part one. I know there were uh, some some people that had submitted questions just asking about kind of the, the timing for that uh, for that reinstatement work. Um, so the, uh, 
now we're going to move on to construction for part two. Uh, I'll give kind of a bit of a brief overview, kind of street by street, on on the type of work that uh, that'll be carried out, and kind of walk walk through uh, what what people can can expect. Um, so as I mentioned before, the work on Arkell uh, Avenue involves replacing the existing uh, trunk storm and uh, and sanitary sewers with smaller local sewers. Um, so as part of this work, the water main and the services to the property line uh, also need to be replaced. So in terms of, of sequencing, one of the first steps that the contractor uh, would need to do would be to install the temporary water system. So, and once that's operational, this would allow the contractor to take the existing water main, decommission it and, and replace it. Uh, so the contractors actually already started uh, the process to install the temporary water services. So they've already kind of started to, to, uh, the isolation process of the existing uh, water main and to set up the, the feeds for the temporary water system. So over the, the coming weeks, we uh, expect that process to, uh, to advance with the contractor laying out, uh, laying out hoses. Uh, that would eventually be used uh, uh, to provide temporary water uh, to, uh, to the homes that are within the construction limits. Um, so with the, with the temporary water system operational, uh, the contractor is expected to start uh, installing the, uh, the, sanit the sanitary sewer down the middle of the road. It's the, the deepest of the, th the three pipes. Afterwards, the, the contractor would either go in and do, would either do the storm sewer or, or the water main. Um, so it may seem over the course of construction on Arkell, like the contractor is continually going back and redigging up sections of, uh, of the, same, uh, the same road over and over again. So just so people are aware, that's perfectly normal. It's very typical of, uh, of most infrastructure projects where you have uh, multiple pipes that are being replaced within, within the right of way. Uh, much of the work has, is typically done sequentially. So contractors would typically start by installing the deeper pipes first, which are usually, uh, usually the sewers. And uh, once those have been installed, they would move on to something like the water main, which are typically shallower, shallower pipes. Uh, so for Arkel, uh, when the contractor is installing the trunk, uh, the trunk storm, uh, trunk, uh, yeah, the trunk storm sewer, they'll also be digging out and removing, uh, re removing the existing trunk storm sewer. So when they put that that smaller local pipe in, they're going to dig out and remove the existing trunk storm sewer. So the the trench, the trench may seem a little bit wider than maybe what you would expect based on the size of the pipe that they're installing. But again, that's just because they're pulling out the, uh, the, the, the older, larger uh, trunk storm sewer pipe. Um, once the, the mainline sewers and the water main are installed, the contractor would then move on and start, uh, start working on replacing the individual uh, house services up to the property line, followed up by uh, installing the uh, installing the catch, drain, catch basin drainage structures within the roadway. Um, as part of the work too, they would also be carrying out the abandonment work of the trunk uh, storm and sanitary sewers that run within the easement uh, between Alpine and, and Arkell. So with once all the underground work is completed, the contractor would basically go through, they would dig down and they would excavate the road box they would place uh, the granular the granular road base. Next, you would see the the curbs the curbs being reinstated. After that, they would fine grade fine grade the road the granulars on the road and then pave pave base course asphalt. After that, the you would start to see the uh, the driveway reinstatement and uh, and landscaping landscape reinstatement. Um, so in terms of in terms of the overall schedule, the the contractor would be targeting getting this work wrapped up by the uh, basically by the end of the summer. So before uh, before school starts back up in in the fall. So while the work is taking place on on Arkell, 
uh, there's going to be a separate crew. It's the crew currently working now on Alpine is uh, is going to be continuing with the the trunk storm sewer installation along Alpine Avenue towards uh, towards Clarinda. So they're already starting to install the the pipe from part two of uh, of the contract. Um, there has already been some advanced tree removals to accommodate uh, the, the trunk storm sewer installation. So that work has already uh, taken place as, as people may have noticed. Um, there's, there's also gonna be a need that there's an existing temporary water system on uh, kind of the Northern end of Alpine that's still operational. There'll be a need to extend that southward towards uh, Clarinda to accommodate Putting a, putting a home on temporary water service for when there, there's some water main work that needs to take place within the Alpine and Clarin and intersection. So that temporary water system needs to be up and running before that work can be, uh, can be completed. So the contractor, as they make their way south on, on Alpine towards Clarinda, they will at some point adjust their operation they will move in and lower the existing the existing water main on Alpine, uh, and that's just to to accommodate the uh, the trunk the larger trunk storm sewer pipe that's being uh, being installed. So once that once that water main is uh, is lowered, they'll jump back onto construction of the trunk storm sewer and continue work uh, continue the installation down. Uh, down Clarinda uh, towards uh, towards Mossdale. So the the trunk storm sewer installation in in part two, like all of part two, is is relatively shallow. Uh, we expect the operation to generally be similar to what took place on uh, on Henley between uh, Connaught and uh, and and Arkell. Um, there is still some some rock removal that is expected, but it would be limited just to to widening the existing rock trench um, from the old trunk storm sewer, just to make room to put the uh, the larger box sewer pipe uh, that's being installed in place. So any any rock removal that is required would be completed by by conventional hoe ramming. There's there's no no blasting in in part two whatsoever. Um, and again, we expect uh, most of the rock seems to be on Alpine. Um, there, I, I suspect that the, the rock will start to fade as we get into Clarinda. There may be a bit on uh, that they encounter on Mossdale and Moncton, but uh, but most of the rock should be uh, should be on Alpine. And again, the the installation of the trunk storm sewer on uh, it, through part two, it's going to be a very it's going to be a very linear process, a single crew basically just working their way kind of from the downstream end to the, the upstream end, uh, or in this case, basically from north to the, to the south end of, uh, of the project limits. Um, and then ultimately, once the underground work is done, the intent is to come in, reinstate the curb, roadway, driveways, uh, landscaping that has been... Uh, been uh, disturbed by uh, by construction, as well as 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 replanting uh, of trees uh, that have been uh, that had to be removed to accommodate the trunk storm sewer installation. So, with the work on Clarinda completed, the the contractor would make their way towards uh, would make their way towards Mossdale. Again, uh, advanced tree removals have to accommodate the trunk storm sewer installation have already taken place. Again, the removals were, were necessary just because the trees were either located over top or in very close proximity to the existing trunk storm sewer. Um, and a new trunk sewer, storm sewer that's being put in is essentially following the, the exact same path as the, uh, as the existing trunk storm sewer. So it was, there, were, there was no way to, uh, to save those uh, to save those trees, um, so in the coming weeks on Mossdale, uh, we could expect the contractor to be moving in with just with a smaller crew, just to do some advanced test pits. Uh, the idea there would be they're going ahead and just digging in some test pits just to kind of confirm the location and depth of the existing uh, the existing gas services that cross over top of uh, of the trunk storm sewer. 
So again, we would expect that work to generally start taking place over the over the next few weeks. Um, once uh, and again, once the trunk storm sewer installation does, reaches Mossdale, um, uh, the installation will will move from Clarinda towards uh, towards Moncton Avenue or Moncton Avenue or Moncton Road. Sorry. Um, and then as the contractor moves their way down the street, um, there, will be, there will be a need to remove and uh, reinstall existing water services that cross the trunk storm sewer. So during these operations, uh, there would be a very short term water interruption for city crews to move in, cut out the old service, and then subsequently reconnect the new service uh, after the trunk storm sewer is, is installed. So I think that the city and the contractor have this, this process somewhat, somewhat refined, and it, uh, it is, it, yeah, the, the water disruptions are quite, uh, quite minimal. Um, and then again, as with, uh, as with Alpine and Clorinda, once the underground work is completed, the intent would be to, co to come in reinstate curb, reinstate road, reinstate driveways that have been impacted, uh, repa repave the road, uh, plant new trees, et cetera. And then when, as, as the construction operation moves from Moss, Mossdale, transitions to, to Moncton, again, there've already been some advanced tree removals that have taken place uh, to accommodate the, the trunk storm sewer installation. Um, we would again expect the contractor to be doing some some advanced test pits in this area as well to uh, to locate gas services that might cross over top of uh, the trunk storm sewer. Um, once the trunk storm sewer installation reaches uh, reaches Moncton um, or reaches uh, reaches Gold uh, Gold Crescent, there's a small uh, local water main that needs to be that needs to be lowered. Uh, to accommodate the trunk storm sewer installation, and uh, um, and then again, as with uh, with Mossdale, there may be some water services that that need to be crossed and kind uh, of cut out, removed, and and reinstated as the uh, as the uh, the trunk st storm sewer installation progresses. Uh, as the trunk storm sewer installation moves across uh, the east leg of Gold Crescent, we expect that uh, that access to Moncton will be temporarily closed while they while they their sewer operation crosses that uh, uh, that leg of, of Gold Crescent, and then once they're crossed, that the road would be would be reopened. And again, once once the underground work is completed, the intent would be to move in and uh, reinstate curb uh, curb uh, driveways, landscaped areas, uh, repave uh, and repave the roadway. Um, eventually, the trunk storm sewer installation will reach the the Moncton and Queensview uh, the Queensview easement. So the, the trunk storm sewer in, installation will keep moving from Moncton southward uh, towards uh, Queensview Drive. Again, there've been some advanced tree removals in, in this area that have already taken place. Um, before the trunk storm sewer installation within the easement can take place, uh, one thing that's a bit different on this street is the contractor will need to come in and install uh, an engineered shoring system directly adjacent to the, the East Condominium building. So this work would be completed by a specialist subcontractor. So the, the details of this installation are currently being designed and, and developed by the contractor. However, we understand that they've, they've tentatively planned to, uh, to, uh, to install the shoring system in, uh, during the month of June. And then again, as details of the work within the condominium property kind of firm up, uh, we'll be providing more, uh, more information, will be co communicated to residents uh, within the condominium complex through the, the condominium's uh, property manager. One thing to note is as the, as the construction operation uh, uh, takes place within the laneway, access for vehicles and pedestrians will be temporarily restricted. Uh, however, access, access across the back laneway uh, will still be maintained while the contractor is working uh, within the laneway. 
Um, then as the construction eventually will move across uh, across that back laneway, at that point, uh, we'll have to temporarily restrict access across the back laneway. So when that takes place, uh, condominium owners who park within kind of the east uh, east of uh, east of the laneway, they'll be given uh, the uh, parking passes that will allow them to park on the city street. So there's allowances in the contract to make sure that the contractor keeps an area on Moncton uh, free and clear for people that are impacted by that temporary loss of parking to uh, to park on on Moncton, and they would also need to provide pedestrian at that point pedestrian access so people can park and then walk through the laneway to uh, to access uh, to access their homes, and then as soon as the construction operation uh, moves across that back laneway, they would reinstate with temporary granular material just to make sure that that people can now start to start to move across and get back into their uh, get back into their parking spaces. And again, similar to all the other streets, uh, once the underground work is completed, the intent would be to go in, reinstate, reinstate the road, parking lot, uh, concrete work and uh, and landscaping. So the underground work for, for part two, which is currently underway, would be completed uh, over the spring, summer, and early fall of this year. Uh, reinstatement work up to base course asphalt, including the curbs, would follow up in behind the sewer installation later in the summer and extending into, into the fall. So uh, the wear course or the, the top lift of asphalt would be, uh, that would be, and any outstanding landscaping that would be completed in the spring and, uh, and summer of, of 2023. So just the next, the next few slides will provide people with just a little bit more information on, on what, to, what to expect during construction. Uh, we, did go over these same slides uh, in earlier public information sessions, but there may be people here specifically from part two that uh, that weren't at the previous information session. So we'll go through these now just to, just to give people an idea of the typical types of things they can expect uh, during during construction. Um, so while the contractor is working, uh, we're expecting that localized road temporary road closures will be required. However, there'll always be, be a, a detour available so that residents have a way around the, uh, the active construction area. Um, we do wanna highlight that local access uh, will still be available when a road is under construction so people can still get, uh, get access to their homes. There will, however, be instances where there will be temporary loss of driveway access due to construction activities. So for example, as the construction operation moves down the various streets, uh, inevitably they'll have to cross uh, residential driveways. Uh, so while the construction operation moves across a driveway, access would be blocked. Uh, in these instances, the project team would be communicating in, in, in advance with residents, uh, providing them with uh, a temporary parking pass, giving them the opportunity to move their cars out of, the, out of their driveways, and the, the temporary parking passes would allow them to, to park on streets in the surrounding, uh, surrounding neighborhood without uh, getting a ticket. Again, residents must still make sure, though, that they, they, uh, that they park legally. Uh, and then again, during during construction, uh, the contractor must uh, must maintain pedestrian access uh, within within the project limits. Um, so this type of civil project and the equipment that uh, that's required to carry out the work inevitably will generate noise, including noise from from limited uh, rock breaking activities uh, to widen the existing sewer trench uh, to make room for the larger pipe being installed. So again. Construction activities still must adhere to the city's noise bylaw, just in terms of sound levels, and in terms of uh, the the working hours. Um, in terms of working hours for the project, I know there was a, a question that had come in. Uh, typically, we would expect a, a typical a typical construction week would be Monday to Friday, 
start construction around 7 a.m. And then typically construction would end anywhere between say 4 and 6 p.m., just depending on the particular activity that, that they're, they're wrapping up for the day. So that would be kind of a typical, typical construction day. Um, during the summer, after periods without rain, uh, construction activities can generate dust. So to help with dust suppression, there's provisions in the, in the contract uh, for the contractor to use uh, water as well as, uh, as calcium chloride that they can spread out. Uh, again, these are dust suppression measures to help reduce, reduce dust. Uh, there's also provisions in the contract for uh, the contractor can make use of uh, sweeper and flusher trucks to go through, uh, you know, to reduce dust and, and debris on roads within and directly adjacent uh, to the project limits. Um, so construction induced vibrations, it's normal to feel vibrations uh, due to heavy equipment. Uh, Construction-induced vibrations are, are very common uh, and they're rarely a cause for concern. So the contractor has already carried out uh, interior and exterior pre-construction inspections uh, of homes in the work area. That's, uh, that's a contract requirement. Uh, so this work is completed by a third-party uh, engineering firm. In this case, case the, 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 the firm is, uh, is Blastec. Uh, they distributed... Uh, uh, letters to people's homes uh, with information so that homeowners could book and schedule an appointment for a pre-construction inspection. So these letters had already gone out for part one, uh, as well as part two work. Uh, we do encourage uh, homeowners to have the pre-construction survey uh, carried out. Uh, if you didn't have one done already uh, and you still wish to do so, you can still have it done. Uh, you can coordinate uh, directly directly with the contractor to uh, to schedule and coordinate for an inspection, or you can reach out to to Kevin or someone on the project team. They'll put you in touch with the contractor so that uh, that you can you can book uh, a pre construction uh, uh, inspection. And then one thing to note too. Uh, as construction does progress uh, through the neighborhood, the contractor may also request uh, consent from, from, uh, from some people at some homes to install vibration monitors, which are essentially seismographs that help measure, uh, measure vibrations within, uh, within the ground from construction activities. Um, residents can generally expect that on-street parking within the project limits uh, would be restricted. Again, this is just to ensure that there aren't parked vehicles in the roadway that would be interfering with construction operations. Again, as construction kind of moves along, parking may still be permitted, uh, you know, by the contractor within pro uh, parts of the project limits where there is an active construction uh, currently underway. Um, that type that type of thing can be essentially be just coordinated on site. Uh, on-street parking outside of the project limits should generally not be impacted by, uh, uh, by construction. Um, so as I'd mentioned, there, there are, there, you know, there are uh, times where the contractor will uh, have to have brief interruptions uh, in, in water supply. So in order to accommodate the, the installation of the trunk storm sewer, there's sections of the water main as well as water services to homes that need to be replaced. Um, so activities related to water main and, and water service replacement would necess can necessitate temporary water interruptions. So these, these interruptions generally are short duration, might only last, uh, last several hours. Um, and the city's anytime there would be a water interruption, the city's drinking water services department would basically be delivering notices uh, to people's homes in advance of any planned uh, planned water outage. Um, there are some locations where the work uh, will require that homes be placed on temporary water. So we spoke about that all already. So while the contractor is switching uh, from the current water system over to the temporary water system and then back again there would be some brief uh, interruptions in the water supply while that uh, while that is work is being carried out uh, again notices would be circulated in advance of any planned uh, 
uh, water service disruption. So again, homes in part two that would be on temporary water are the handful of homes at the north end of, uh, of our kill within the part two limits. And I think we only have a single property on Alpine uh, in the vicinity of the, the Clarinda intersection. Uh, trucks will be required to access the site to, to remove uh, excavated material, deliver material to site, and support the active construction operation. So truck routes would be identified by the contractor. And they, you know, as construction kind of winds its way through the neighborhood, uh, you know, these, these truck routes could, uh, could change as, as construction progresses. And that, uh, that's it for my portion of the presentation. I'm going to, to hand things back over to Kevin. He's going to talk a little bit about, uh, again, what might happen if there is a suspected, I guess, damage to your home as a result of, of construction. Again, it's, it's rare, but uh, we wanted to give people some, some information uh, on that and, uh, and the claims process. Thank you, Jason. So what, what to do if you notice damage to your property? Well, gather records and information such as the pictures, the measurements, estimates, any invoices for any costs incurred. Uh, you can request the pre-construction inspection reports from the third-party engineering firm Blastic, who conducted the pre-construction inspection. You can submit a claim to the contractor using these records above, as indicated above. And it may be advisable to reach out to your home insurance company just to inform them, just to disclose of to them the events and even if you do not attend to claim. So claim process. Next slide, Jason. So if you believe that you have been injured or that your property has been damaged by the contractor working for the city, you have two avenues to make the claim. You can make the claim directly to the contractor or you can send your claim to the city's claims unit and the, the website is that location, that's a link. Um, this, will be not, this will be uploaded on uh, the project website, so for your convenience. If you file your claim through the city, the claims unit will forward the claim to the contractor so it can be investigated. The claims unit will let you know that the claim has been turned over to the contractor. The contractor will be in touch with you in a few days to let you know that they have received the claim and to provide you with the name of the contact person within the contractor firm. If you do not hear from the private contractor, please let the claims unit know and the city's claims unit will help you identify the private contract. In our case, our private contractor is known, it's case, and we have a link for the, the contact person for any claims uh, for this project. Next slide, Jason. <clears throat> if you file your claim through the contractor, the private contractor should be in touch with you in a few days to let you know that they have received the claim and to provide you with the name of the contact person. Uh, if you do not hear from the private contractor, our case, our contractor, please let, let me know and uh, the city will help you identify the person to contact and facilitate the contact. Next slide. <clears throat> so the contractor will conduct an investigation and make a decision regarding your claim. The contractor determines that it's, if the contractor determines that it's legally responsible for your loss, It'll resolve the claim directly with you. If the contractor determines that it's not legally liable for damage or loss, your claim will likely be denied. If you disagree with the contractor's decision, you can contact the city's claims unit to help better understand the basis which the claim might have been denied, although the city cannot intervene directly on your behalf. The contractor's information is, is below. Uh, Paul Amir, project manager, case construction. This information will also be posted on the website. It is posted actually right now. Next slide. So that brings our presentation to the end. Uh, we have received a number of comments in the chat and I could read them out. And questions, questions in the chat and we can go through them one at a time. Okay. So first question, uh, would it be possible for homeowners to get their portion of the sewer line done at the same time at their own expense? 
Uh, Jason, do we have that opportunity on this project? I think that's a it really, yeah, really what I think what it what it comes down to is it's that would strictly be an arrangement, like the city wouldn't yeah. get involved, but it would strictly be an arrangement that between the homeowner and the contractor. So we can certainly, you know, facilitate in terms of providing the contractor's coordinates, the, the homeowner could reach out and, and then, and then have a discussion with, uh, with the contractor. It's, they're, they're under no obligation to do that. Some, some contractors, some contractors don't mind. Some contractors would prefer to just keep to the, to the city work. So it really, it really does come down to, to kind of the, the contractor, but there's certainly, there's certainly an opportunity that we can, we can put the homeowner in touch with the contractor and uh, yeah, if that's something they're willing to entertain, they, they would provide you with a quotation and uh, that would be something strictly between the homeowner and, uh, and the, and the contractor at that point. But there, the, the, yeah. If the contractor is willing, there's certainly some, there's certainly some, some benefits to to having, you know, the work done now. If that's something you're considering, given that there's already construction mobilized on site. Okay. Next question: How close estimate would the North Speed Hump be to the four-way stop at Alpine and Elmers? Um, if I recall on the sketch that we had for this location of speed humps. I think the first speed hump is about 30 meters to the north of the intersection. And the next one, the second speed hump, so the furthest speed hump is about 80 meters from the first one. I think that's the numbers. Of, yeah. Yeah. So the first, the first speed hump is 30 meters from the intersection. And the second speed hump is approximately 80 meters from the intersection. And this is actually uh, calculated. Uh, to reduce the speed down to the 30 kilometers uh, engineered streets. Uh, so is this, was, that, was the question about the distance from Elmhurst, is that? From Elmhurst, we only have the information from. Uh, yeah, we'd have to, I, I don't know off the top of my head, we'd have to, uh, okay. we'd have to kind of, uh, yeah, scale it off. And again, right now, what we have is, is schematic. So we would be kind of, the next steps would just to be to kind of look at what's what's in the area you definitely you don't want to have a speed hump at the bottom of, of a driveway or uh, there's yeah. certain there's certain restrictions in terms of you, you also don't want them you know if you have a, a maintenance hole or a water main valve or something so you know we have to do a little bit of looking around just to fine tune the location this, so this is but this is generally the concept that the, that the city's looking to, to implement thank you next question. Uh, the intention is to pave uh, uh, pave Henley 2023 to complete the construction. So as a question, uh, will the paving be completed on Henley in 2023? And I believe the top top lift of asphalt will be placed uh, next year. Yeah, so for on Henley, you would for sure have your base course down. Uh, I think the contractors suggested that they may want to do uh, the wear course as well for part one later on in in the fall, but th there may be a, it may be worth having a bit of a discussion just kind of with the contractor in terms of uh, of what makes the most sense. Do do the, do the top lift of asphalt for for part one uh, uh, this year, uh, knowing that you're coming back and doing the, the top lift for part two next year. There may be some advantages to to potentially delaying it and doing it all at once, just in terms of getting a nice uniform course. But uh, yeah, for sure, base course this year, possibly wear course. Thank you. Uh, when will the current temporary water service on Alpine be replaced with regular service? Um, so right now, yeah. So right now the regular, like the regular services have been installed. It's, it's a question of, I guess, doing, doing the, the, the transfer. I know there was originally, uh, the contractor been looking at maybe doing that during, during the winter, uh, ultimately when it kind of made sense to, to just hold off a little bit, just with, with the snow and the colder temperatures, uh, the, the process to kind of switch people back onto the regular water was a little bit more involved to do it uh, to do it during the winter. 
Um, we have had there. There may we we may be looking at just delaying that a little bit more into uh, once the the contractors completed the water main lowering at uh, Clarinda and and Alpine. The rationale there is again just when the contractor does that work, there will be some some uh, the contractor will have to basically put the water main system on Alpine out of service temporarily when they do that switch. So the thought had been, if we keep people on the temporary water just a little bit longer, it's just one, one less water service interruption that they're, they're gonna have to live through. Um, and now that we're kind of out of the colder temperatures, there's really, uh, there's really not a lot, no, no real risk involved anymore. So uh, I think we, we're probably looking at uh, mid to end of May. Thank you. Next question, will the street be closed from Alpine to Mossdale along Clarenda and for how long? So uh, the will the street be closed. be closed on Clarenda from Alpine to Mossdale and for how long? Yeah, so yeah, so there's a bus route that currently runs down Clarinda. So there is uh, a contractual requirement for the contractor to maintain a lane on Clarinda. Just recognizing that Clarinda is a little bit special one. It has a bus. There's no real easy way to detour the bus like there was uh, at uh, at Connaught and, and Henley. Uh, so they do have to keep that lane open for for the bus while they work on uh, on. Uh, on Clarenda. So I think it will be seen a lane, at least a lane, a lane open on, uh, on Clarenda. Thank you. Next question. When you say minimal regarding water disruptions, are you talking about hours, days, or weeks? If all goes well. Uh, well, in terms of, so I guess there's two different types of operation. There's, there's, as the contractor moves across individual water services where people aren't on temporary water and, and they basically need to cut out, cut out the old and put on the new, uh, that seems to be a process that is, is quite quick, like less, I think it's that they managed to do the ones on Henley in less than an hour. So an hour kind of a quick switch to cut you, you know, and then another switch afterwards to put you back on, on the new service. So that tends to be fairly quick uh, in terms of something more like when they're do, when they're isolating the water main say on on alpine that's a little bit more of an involved operation probably what we've seen so far is that those op usually takes about four to six hours it certainly wouldn't be certainly wouldn't be longer than eight at least at this point we haven't seen that so we're definitely not talking days or weeks for sure thank you Next question, will the landscaping work involve removal of gravel on lawns? Uh, well, yeah, so right now, uh, like right now, I guess any lawns that are that are dug up, yeah, the contractor would basically the, be removing, uh, yeah, any, any debris and whatnot. There's the requirement is to put in four inches of topsoil prior to sodding. Will landscaping be done in consultation with individual homeowners regarding needs, i.e. good quality soil, selection of trees, shrubs, perennials to replace those that have been lost? Um, yeah, in terms of, so in turn, so maybe I'll, I'll answer that in two parts. So let's talk about trees. And I think there were questions that have been submitted in advance about trees and tree planting. So yes, there were, there were a significant uh, number of trees that unfortunately had to be removed to accommodate the trunk storm sewer installation. So there is, um, there, were, there was a landscape architect that was part of the project team who basically developed a, a, a planting and compensation plan specific to the trees. So in general, the, the new trees are being planted for trees that were lost at a ratio of about two to one. So the the contract involves basically planting double, double the number of trees that uh, that were removed. So the landscape architect has basically put together a plan already. They they've selected uh, locations within the city right of way and selected a variety of, of of different plant species. That has also been reviewed by the the city's forestry department and and basically approved. Uh, so. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm not, it, it's, I'm not saying it's set in stone, but generally speaking, um, you know, the, the city would like to stick to kind of the, their planting plan, although there's certainly no harm in having residents having a conversation with the city's forestry department. Um, if there's a certain species that they, they would prefer, but that, that I, I know that they might be a little bit reticent to make wholesale changes across everything. And they, cause I, I, they do want to have a certain kind of variety and yeah. certainly breaking up the, the species kind of across the project area. Exactly. So, so we do have, I think posted on the, on the project website, there is a document and I think it's by, by property. And it says what, what trees would be planted by, by property. So people can go onto the city's website uh, and see that. Um, we do, we do have an actual plan as well that uh, it, it isn't on the project website, but certainly if people wanted to have a, a closer look at it, we could certainly do that, uh, arrange that uh, offline. There's, there's no problems there. Uh, in terms of, again, specific needs, like if people had, if people had interlock or, or whatnot, again, there's a contractual requirement for the contractor to basically kind of reinstate uh, what was there. Um, they may have potentially already salvaged, salvaged some of that material just for, for reuse. Uh, I know some people possibly had more involved gardens uh, with a variety of different perennials. So that's certainly when the, the contractor's landscaper gets on site, there, there could definitely be some, some coordination between the, the landscaper and the homeowner. And again, we have we do have a site inspector that could kind of help facilitate those discussions in terms of, and, and if people had pictures of what, again, we have our own pictures, but if people had pictures or lists of, of species that they had, that's certainly something that could be, could be uh, coordinated uh, on site once, uh, once the landscaping process uh, starts up. I've had on other projects where there was one particular plant or small little shrub which was planted in memorial of a family member. Uh, if that is the case, we suggest that you know you might want to relocate that yourself if it's so dear to you. Uh, you can temporarily relocate it and then we can put it back afterwards. Okay, next question. Um, there has been draw dry sawing of concrete and idling of construction vehicles when not uh, in use over lunch hour, both resulting in poor quality, very poor quality, air quality, at times infiltrating homes and measures. Are measures being considered to reduce such emissions moving forward? Okay, um, well, I, I'll, I'll start this question. Um, essentially, uh, the diesel, equipment has to run, uh, it, it's very hard to start and stop uh, heavy diesel equipment and uh, it, it's preferable that it actually runs, uh, keeping the vehicle warm, otherwise uh, the engine warm, otherwise uh, it might uh, have problems starting up again. Um, it's in terms of uh, Sawing of concrete, we had uh, a problem where we had some uh, concrete being sawed, uh, cut uh, into an existing manhole. And normally we have some dust suppressant uh, water that's used. In this particular case, it wasn't used, which led to uh, an excessive amount of dust with being generated. Um, we have corrected that and uh, our site inspector is going to be following that very closely. Jason, you want to add anything? Uh, uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. We did. We did make a, a specific point of bringing that issue up at, at one of our construction meetings. So I think we made a, a good point there. Uh, again, um, moving that moving forward, like in terms of the most of the the work we're we're doing now is is basically we're not we're not coring or tying into to new maintenance halls at this point. We're just kind of replacing what's there. So I think we're hopefully the. The instances of, of that needing to take place will be minimal. Okay, next question. What is the deadline to complete uh, pre-construction inspection? Uh, I don't know that there's a specific deadline per se. Uh, I, uh, 
the, the sooner the better. Uh, certainly before you know the construction activities get 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 close to your home would would be best. Um, but I don't know that there's a, a, a drop dead date. Okay. Next question. How long in advance do the notifications for water interruptions go out? <sighs> I'm not sure what the, it, it's, that's, it's the city's drinking water services department. I know, I know that with COVID uh, and more people working from home, the notice has been, it has been kind of extended from, from kind of pre-COVID. I just can't remember off the top of my head if it's 48 hours or 72 hours. I don't, I don't know, Bruce, if you might remember off the top of your head what, what they're going with now. We certainly did extend, uh, you know, or at least our goal uh, with more people at home. Uh, I would have to check that as well. I, okay. I think kind of our standard might actually be 24 hours, but we certainly always try to exceed that. But yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure they were going with 48, but. Okay, so there is sufficient uh, advance notice. Um, next question, will Henley, Henley need to be ripped up next summer for uh, the sidewalk? So I think that's the sidewalk um, along uh, Henley and Connaught. Yeah, well, that's certainly what, like, in terms of Henley, you shouldn't see, like, the sidewalk will be going in this year, so we won't be ripping up Henley again. Mm -hmm. And I guess, going back to this slide here, the idea uh, of what I had discussed is if the city can get this short section of sidewalk and this raised pedestrian crossing installed now as part of the current contract, then there won't be a need to impact Henley when they come next year to do the, the balance of the sidewalk. So certainly that's, that's the idea uh, behind including this limited work kind of uh, concrete work within the, uh, the Connaught and Henley intersection is to make sure we don't go back in next year and rip up what we just put in. Kevin, yeah, yes. uh, I got a question that was sent directly to me, so I'll, I'll read okay. it to you. Um, is there any projects uh, in the works to repave chambers? The heavy construction traffic has done a, a real job on the road. I am not aware of it, but I can look into it. I'll take a note and I'll ask our uh, asset management branch uh, if they have a project uh, in the future for chambers. Thank you. Okay. Oops. Okay. Lost my schedule here. Okay. So, next uh, question Is it only four inches of topsoil also for garden areas? The pre previous level of soil was more than four inches. If it's not a commitment to return it to what it was, um, I think that's, I think that's something we could have a, have, have a, a conversation on site with if there are specific instances where there are, are gar gardens or flower beds um, okay. Thank where, you. where more soil is required, we can certainly have that discussion. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, will plows be able to access Moncton? Uh, Yes, because we won't be building in the winter. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so the idea would be, yeah, the, the contractor basically will, yeah, uh, will have things, they're contractually required to have things wrapped up for part two by, uh, by winter. Okay, um, okay. Okay, I'm just looking for, that's it. So I think, let me just double check here, Kevin, because there were yeah. some that had been submitted in advance yeah. by email. I'll just see if there was yeah. if there were yeah. something that maybe we hadn't addressed. I think we talked about, yeah, we talked about Henley being repaved this summer. Arkell would, the idea, Arkell work would be kind of wrapped up by before school gets back in. We did, there were, was a question about selecting specific trees. Uh, again, we, we do have, uh, there, there's already a, a replanting plan that has been provided 
Um, and again, there's details about the plantings at each property that is on the city's website. Certainly if there's any questions or comments that come out of that, we can, we can certainly have, uh, have further discussion. Um, yeah, more question about trees. Yeah, there's no, no blasting in part two. We're done with blasting. If there's any, again, the main, if there's anything that comes up during construction, Kevin would be kind of the, the main point of contact. So if there's something, any comments or questions or, or specific issues that happen during construction, you can certainly go, go to Kevin and we can kind of help get, get to the bottom, bottom of things or answer your question. There's also uh, a, site in, a site inspector that's on full-time as well. And, uh, you know, people will get to, get to know who that person is kind of as, as construction kind of progresses on their street. And they're certainly the, the best point of contact um, for anything that might be happening on site. I just want to encourage everyone, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have anything you want to uh, share with me, ask me, uh, tell me, inform me, please reach out to me. Uh, I just put my, uh, my email address in the chat and my phone is also uh, I'll give you my office. Um, actually, my coordinates are on the, on the front of the document here, so we'll upload that also uh, on the website. Okay, I don't see any other questions, so if there's no other questions, um, thank you very much for participating tonight. Thank you for your questions. Uh, we are here to uh, help facilitate this. This is a big project. Um, and uh, we're here to help. And if there's anything, if you, anything you, if you have, um, for example, if moving or moving uh, furniture or deliveries coming this uh, summer, uh, please contact the site inspector or myself. We can make arrangements. While even though if the road is blocked, we can ask the contractor to move to make uh, the delivery uh, for special items. Uh, if there's anything, if you're having a, a summer party or wedding or any type of uh, um, um, community gathering that we should be aware of, please let me know. We can work together. We can coordinate with the contractor and we can make things uh, go a lot easier. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, thank you uh, to the whole team. Um, and thank you to residents. I know this has not been easy. This has been very difficult. This is not normal and um, we're all not having normal with the pandemic, but to have this on top of it and good old Queensway Terrace North also gets a, you know, an LRT project happening in their backyard as well. Um, you're getting it from all sides. And this is certainly very um, invasive to your properties. Um, and um, I, I appreciate that uh, this is uh, uh, more than you, than, than you can usually do um, in, um, uh, it, it's a tough, it's a lot to put up with. Let's put it that way. Um, so I appreciate your patience. Um, and um, the lines of communication are open, as Kevin has said. Um, and um, I appreciate that uh, he's been made, he's making himself available. And um, thank you all. And um, obviously, you can keep the questions coming because you'll, you'll probably think of something, you know, 10 minutes later. And that'll, that's always what happens. So um, take care and uh, have a good rest of the evening and thank you to the whole team.